Now let us go on with the main problem, namely how we can prepare the cup such that it can be texturized in a reasonable way. Let us first take a close look into how the cup is constructed. As you can see it is made out of individual connected faces. We can find quads here and triangles. Now we already know that each face has got only one side, and furthermore we know that each triangle has an absolute plane surface. You also have to know that most graphic engines internally work only with triangles, so they automatically convert quads and more complex polygons to triangles. We have the option in Blender to do this conversion to triangles by ourselves, But let's keep this for later. For now we only have to remember that all faces have one side, that graphic engines mostly use triangles, and that triangles always have plane surfaces. But that means that the surface of any three-dimensional object can always be separated into a set of two-dimensional areas with triangular shape. And two-dimensional areas can be filled with simple images. So, all we have to do at the end is to specify which image or which part of an image shall be used to colorize which triangle. This association between images and triangles is also named, a mapping. And because the images have only two dimensions, we can use a two-dimensional coordinate system to specify locations on the image. But instead of naming the dimensions, X and Y, we now use, U and V. We do this to avoid mixing up image coordinates with object coordinates. And because all of that, this method of colorizing and texturing objects is named, UV mapping. Let's go into practice. So we now have to associate each face of the model to one or more images. And this process is called, UV unwrapping. But it does not make much sense to associate each face to an image area by hand. This can be done much better by a computer. And Blender provides some tools which make UV unwrapping easy. You find the UV tools when you are in edit mode. Enable face select mode and then select one single face. Now press U. This opens the UV unwrap option menu. From all available options select the first one, unwrap. Now apparently nothing happened. Well no. That is not true. Actually a lot has happened in the background and now we make this visible. Switch to the UV editing screen layout. Now you see the UV editor. And therein is the UV map section, where the U axis goes from left to right, and the V axis goes from bottom to top. Here you see the UV map. It currently contains a single highlighted quad. This is the mapping of the face that we just have unwrapped. This quad is defined in the UV space, hence it is named UV face. Right now it is just a scaled replica of the original face on the model. So now we have the map, but we still have no texture. We can create a test texture for demo purposes. In the image editor select, image, new image. Check the UV test grid option. This generates a demo texture with a test grid. But we still do not see the texture on the object. We first have to enable the viewport shading mode, texture. And finally we can see it. The single unwrapped face now gets correctly mapped from the textured to the object surface. But now our object is not nicely illuminated. This is because we have not yet set up our lighting environment. I will get back to this later. For now I show you a nice trick for quick checking your unwrapping. This method is independent of the light setup. Go back to viewport shading solid. Then open the left properties sidebar. Search the display section. And here enable textured solid. This will display your textures directly on your model. And that is what we want for now. Our next goal is to unwrap all faces of the model, and thus create a complete UV map. In principle that is easy. But the next caveat is waiting for us. Let me restart the unwrap from scratch and delete the UV map. 
Unfortunately we cannot delete the UV map from the image editor. We first have to open the object properties section. Let me create a new window space and select the properties window. Then switch to the object data section. Scroll down until you see the UV map listing. Here we see one single entry. This UV map has been created from our previous unwrap. I will remove this UV map now. Then I can restart from scratch. Normally you do not need to do this. But it is good to know where the UV maps are maintained. Now here is the promised caveat. Select all faces in edit mode. Then press U, and select unwrap as before. And the UV image editor now shows two triangles. Did you expect this to happen? Actually all faces are unwrapped by now, but they have been stacked all on top of each other. That was not exactly what we wanted to achieve. Somehow my personal expectation was to see a non-overlapping mapping, so that I can do a reasonable texturing job. For example I want to add some flowers or a typical coffee mug pattern to the cup surface. But this UV map is certainly not very useful for our purpose here. Now it is time to check out the other UV mapping options. Press U again. Then select the second UV unwrap option, Smart UV Project. This unwrap method tries to find a nice automatic unwrap. So the result now looks much more useful. Indeed now the UV faces are nicely distributed over the available UV space. But we also see that we now have a lot of separated chunks. While this is not too bad, it is still what the computer has decided for you. And sometimes, well to be honest I must say, in most times the computer is not smart enough. So what is the problem here? The problem is that the computer does not know what it makes. That is it does not know that this is a coffee mug. So it does not know where it should cut the surface into separate chunks of disconnected texture areas. And each chunk has an outer border. Outer borders often yield visible seams on your model. Actually we want to avoid seams if ever possible. Or we at least want to place seams where they are unapparent. So the good news is, we can tell the computer where the seams shall be placed. Hence we have full control over how the unwrap is done. All we need to do now is to define the seams. Okay, let's do it. We can immediately see that separating the bottom of the cup is a good idea. So we will place two seams as follows. Go to edge selection mode. Move the cursor over the edge loop that shall become a seam. Then press and hold alt and click the right mouse button to select the edge. Then press Ctrl E, and from the pop-up selector choose Mark Seam. Now the marked edge appears in a bright orange. Do the same on the inner side of the cup. Move the cursor over the edge loop. Press and hold Alt, then right mouse click. Press Ctrl E, and select Mark Seam. Now select all vertices, and try another UV unwrap by again pressing U. And finally select the first unwrap option. And again we found a pitfall. Well, the good news is that the bottom of the cup is nicely unwrapped into two circular shapes. But the entire side of the cup is also wrapped into a circle. And when we look at our test pattern, then we see that the mud walls show some unpleasant distortions. Somehow it would be much nicer to unwrap the entire wall section to a flat shape. And here is the trick how to do that. We need to add one vertical extra seam like this. Now do another unwrap. The result is almost what we want. But we can make that even better. Since our mug is an ideal cylinder we can use a cylinder unwrapping which would make most sense here. But we want to keep the bottom circles intact. Simply unselect the center vertices. Now the unwrap will keep the bottom as it is. It is important to go to front view before we unwrap. 
Now unwrap again, then select cylinder projection. Now the cup walls are perfectly unwrapped, and the last remaining issue is that the unwrapper did not take care about the scaling. Hence we want to scale the V-axis by hand until the test pattern shows rectangles again. Then we move the UV faces down to the bottom of the map. Now select the entire cup. And see that the UV map now has a nice shape which will make texturing the cup very easy. Let us finally export the mug and see how it behaves in Second Life. Congratulations, now you have managed to do your very first successful unwrap. Of course the coffee mug is a very simple example. But the principles of unwrapping should have become a bit more clear by now. We will get back to unwrapping issues frequently. But we are finished with this chapter by now. And you may wish to redo it a few times because unwrapping needs some practice. In the next chapter we will continue by adding a real image textured to the mug.